The moment I've been waiting for for Webflow and AI is finally here. It's doing stuff. Look at my hands. I'm not touching it. Yeah, this is using proper client first. This is something that I would absolutely use this for. What is going on here? What is going on here? No way. If this can turn it into a component with component props, I am going to go crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's my favorite thing so far. So you might know about the Webflow MCP. It allows you to do things like manipulate your CMS from AI. Now, I woke up this morning and found out that now there's a designer MCP that's actually gonna allow you to work in the Webflow designer using AI. So I did a video recently on Miyagi Agents, which is a third-party app that allows this, but it seems like Webflow is also trying to do this themselves. So in this video, we are gonna set it up from scratch. We're gonna try it out. We're gonna see if it's good, if it sucks, and yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so first things first, all of the links for things that I'm using are in the description. And starting off, we have the instructions here from Webflow on how to install it. So I'm gonna do it using Claude Desktop. Recently, I've used the Webflow MCP using Cursor, but Cursor is a code editor, and you don't really need to edit any code, per se, when you're doing this, so I think Claude Desktop is probably the way to go. First things first, in Claude Desktop, you need to enable developer mode. So I've already done this. You go to help in the top bar, troubleshooting, enable developer mode, and then you can do it. So let's go ahead and get Claude open. And then we are going to go to Claude up here and then settings. And we're gonna to go to developer. So next thing I'm gonna do is edit the config. And it's just gonna pop this file open here in a folder and I'm gonna to have to open that in a code editor. Just like so, we can see this is blank. So I am gonna go ahead now and copy the code right here and paste it in like so, and I'm gonna hit save, just like that. The next thing I'm gonna to have to do is restart Claude. So, just like that, I'm going to quit Claude, and then I'm going to reopen it. And it's gonna pop open, and it might take a second, and then it should go ahead and open in the browser so that I can authenticate with it. All right, so now I have authenticated, and I am going to go ahead and just check if it has access. So I'm gonna say, do you have access to the Webflow MCP, which site did I authorize? Now what it should do is make some tool call and then let me know the specific site that I authorized. So I know I cut out the authentication part, but what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and make sure you only allow one site because this can actually make changes to your website. And we have, for example, the member stack site. I do not want it to be able to break our most important site. So I only authorize the site that I'm testing today and that is exactly what I want. So perfect, I am now going to pop this open right here. And now I am gonna say, can you see my style guide? Okay, so now it's telling me I need to launch the designer MCP app. Let's go ahead and do that. And I think I'm gonna have to close this off and switch it to design mode, just like that. Okay, so now it says we are connected to the MCP server and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and have both of these open at the same time so we can watch what's going on. There we go. Okay, so now we have access to it and we have this. So I'm gonna say, you're authorized. Can you see my client first style guide. And I'm going to send. Look at that. That is all correct. That is absolutely beautiful. Okay. So I'm hoping this is going to be enough for it for documentation. Now I could also upload like the client first getting started guide to make it a little bit more accurate, but I think this is going to be fine for now. It seems to know what's going on. I'm going to say now I have a homepage and it's just a placeholder. Can you make me a nice landing page using client first. Just three sections for now. I don't want to overwhelm it. Let's just go ahead and say three sections and see if it can get that done. If it can get this done and make something that looks half decent, I will be blown away. If not, we're going to go ahead and try to figure out some ways that we can use it in our workflow, even with the current state of it right now. It's doing stuff. Look at my hands. I'm not touching it. Here, let me just scroll down so we can watch what it's doing. This is pretty cool. It looks like I'm doing something, but I'm not doing something. Now let me add the features section after the hero. Okay, so it, it, it didn't make a new section here. It just changed the copy. Whoa, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> okay, 
Um, add the features grid to this section. Okay, yeah, because right now, I mean, hey, this doesn't look very nice. So hopefully it's going to add some nice features. If this actually looks good and uses my style guide, I don't even know what to say. At this point, my flow is just going to be make it and reloom and then edit it with the MCP. Yeah, this is using proper client first. I mean, hey, this looks like garbage right now. So there's that, but <laughs> it's actually working. Okay, so what's it doing now? Now let me add the call to action section as the third section. I wonder if it's made this responsive or what it's done. Okay, you know what? This is actually going pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this right now. Uh, we're gonna try to tweak it as well. I'm just gonna make this a design first of all. So that they're all the same amount of lines. What are these icons? These icons look horrible. I can't get past that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, come up with something new for the icons because this looks like horrible. Can you make some nice SVG icons for the features section? Because this looks bad right now. Also, there's no button in my CTA. I mean, hey, my first thoughts are it worked. I can't ignore that. And I'm, I also want to, okay, everything here is client first. What this would be really great for is beginners, let's say people who don't know client first yet, and they design their site and it looks good. And then you could just be like, is this proper client first? Upload the client first documentation. And yeah, I think that would be a really, really smart way to go. I don't know what this icon is right now. I mean, hey, this, this looks terrible. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's just putting, okay, it's just putting the SVG in the text. So that's obviously going to need to be fixed. Second feature heading that got cut off. Oh, I cut it off intentionally. That's the thing about working with AI. You kind of got to find your workflows because, I mean, like, what, what is going on here? What is going on here? All right, I'm just going to start preparing my next instruction already and say, uh, you just added the code as text. Can you make the SVG a code embed element? And then I don't know what it's doing with the button. I think it made two buttons here. Okay, it did button and button is secondary. That being said, it doesn't work with the background. So it doesn't seem to, I guess, be able to visually see what's going on, which probably isn't a good thing. I would like for it to actually be able to look and know what's happening. I wonder if it's going to be able to figure out these icons right now. Yes, please do create a custom code embed. Yes, allow always. Okay, so far, I still just see the text. Come on, MCP, don't disappoint me, please. Oh, I don't see the code text anymore. That's a good sign. And clear the text content from these elements so the script can properly inject the SVG. Okay, that sounds good to me. I like where we're going. It, this is perfect client first. I mean, does it look bad? Yes, it looks bad. I'm not gonna lie, it looks terrible. And that is not a proper SVG implementation. Maybe, no, no. Uh, how, how did it, how did it manage to do this? Okay, so it seems to be having some issues here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm actually just gonna delete these sections now. And I'm gonna make a new section. And I am, I've been using like only client first for years now. And so this is gonna pain me to my core. But what I wanna do right now is make a section that's just horrible, horrible. Actually, you know what? I'm just not even gonna name the classes. Let's go ahead. Let's make a section here. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. Inside of it, I'm gonna put another div. Inside of it, I'm gonna put a heading, paragraph, button. Okay, now, oh God, forgive me for what I'm about to do. Let's just 80, 85%. 5% heading. Okay, let's make this at least a heading too. Not that crazy. And let's say 20 pixels under this. Let's say 40 pixels. And then let's make this button red with some border radius. Okay, this looks catastrophic. Let's go ahead and see if it can turn this into client first. I just made a section class div block, oh geez, class div block. Uh, can you keep it looking the same, but make it client first? Okay, this would be very useful if this works, not even just for beginners who do this stuff, whatever I just did. You know, we all make mistakes. We don't always follow our style guide to a T. 
uh, and sometimes we miss things. So if we could just have the MCP run through it and like confirm that it's client first or not client first, that would be great. See right now, okay, it's done padding section large, container large, that's so far all correct. I wonder if it's just gonna replace the elements classes or if it's actually gonna make like new, new classes here that follow client first. Cause that is what I asked it to do. Okay, need to create a custom style for the red background since it's not a part of the classic standard client first color system. Yep, okay, so right now it did that. Now I need to create a combo class. Yes, absolutely. This is going really well. This is something that I would absolutely use this for. Even for myself, because like I said, we all make mistakes with our style guide every now and again. Another thing I can see coming out is people like Finn Sweet, Corey Moan with Mast, Timothy Ricks with Lumos, actually making like context for AI about the class naming system. I wonder if this can make components. We're gonna try that in a second too. It indeed, okay, I'm not gonna lie, it's ever so slightly different, the button, if you can see here. Um, okay, good, yes, you don't want to affect all buttons. I'm glad it had some hindsight to not do that. Okay, so the only issue, it did this all, yes, heading H2, margin, bottom, instead of just having like, stupid pixels in order to make that work. So it did that really good. It didn't add this is red combo class. Unfortunately, I don't know why it doesn't understand that it didn't do that, but I mean, hey. Okay, I'm gonna say now, can you turn this into a component? I have no idea if it can turn things into components. Can you make this section a component with component props? I, please, Webflow gods, make this work because I hate making components. It's, it's so boring and tedious. I do not like it at all. Oh, absolutely. No way. If this turns, if this can turn it into a component with component props, I am going to go crazy. Okay. You do not understand how happy this is going to make me if I can do this. Because, yeah, no, it just right click, convert to component, add these props, punch them in. Oh, and the other thing that you can do, if it can actually work with components, I may be getting ahead of myself, it seems confused. But anyways, if it can actually work with components, then you can make components and then you can have AI generate pages using those components that you designed and you built. That is very exciting. Component instance. Now I have a component. Oh, 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 I see a component. I see a component. If this adds props, I'm gonna be a happy guy. No way. Add text properties, allow. Okay, so this is a way that I would definitely use this MCP. So we've got two things. Would I use it to design sections for myself? No, no, it did not pass my test on that. Would I use it to uh, perfect my class names? Yes. Would I use it to build components? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's my favorite thing so far. And again, if I was a beginner who didn't really understand the class name system I was using, I would totally use it to check out my class names. So if it does this with proper component props, it looks good. You know, that is just going to make my day. And if it does this, I think that's a great spot to end the video at just because we're gonna make a whole bunch more videos on like specific ways of using this. So I'm gonna actually dig into this component thing more. In this video, I really just, I just got the news and I really wanted to release a video ASAP showing you how good this is. It's, it's taken its sweet time. I will, I will give it that, but I mean, hey, I could just sit here and drink a coffee right now and watch it do its thing. Okay, so we have content section. I don't see any component props. That's a problem. It, it did make it a component, so that's good. So let's go ahead and check if it can. Okay, so I'm gonna say, good job making it a component, but there are no props. And my feedback to the Webflow team, if you're watching this, is if it can't add prompts, make it so it can add prompts. Let me add, it, it seems to think it can add props. Ah, uh, current tools don't directly support creating component properties. Okay, that's a little bit disappointing. I have to say it would be really exciting if it could do that. Ah, that's a shame. Okay, well, I'm gonna say I am excited about this. I think there are definitely some good use cases for it right now. And I think it's gonna keep getting better. I'm literally using it within maybe 12 hours of it being released. So it's gonna get better. Uh, this is super exciting. If you're using the Webflow Designer MCP, let me know what you've discovered it can do. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.